Now then, as part of this whole series of describing second hand grid inverters that can be bought from eBay and places like that, you know, if you don't know uh, the finer details of these sorts of things, you can find the technical spec, but really, yeah, you want to see it. So that's what these uh, videos are about, really. It's like, okay, here we've got a so-and-so, and, -so and uh, this is what it looks like. Well, this one's a grow watt. I think it's a 3.6 kilowatt, and it starts at 100 volts. Useful. 100 volt starts, very useful, not like the old days when some inverters didn't start until, say, 225 volts. So, you know, you could put four panels on this and it would be very underrun, or you could put six on there and it'd still be fine. So there we go. Um, I'm just trying to... We've got loads of... Got the MC4 connectors there. This is a, a dual tracker, and we've got the mains there. Now, interestingly, the mains is it's not a plug. You take this cover off here, and there's three wired connections, screw connections. So that's great, isn't it? It's not a fancy plug that um, is slightly different from the other one, and the other one, and the other one. So what I'm trying to do here, just give us a minute. There we go. There you go. Six screws to, to hold the front on and a screen but no buttons. Mm. It's tapping and um, I find that rather a pain in the neck. But let's have a look at the, the label and then whilst we're there we can also look at the mounting bracket because I do have the mounting bracket for this one which is very useful. Right. Okay, here we go. Zoom out a little bit. It's got to be on its side, unfortunately. 100 volt DC range, 100 to 600. At 3.6 kilowatt maximum. But you wouldn't want to run it at that. Not if you wanted it to last 10 years. G59, so it's quite a quick start up instead of the G83 stroke 1 so there we go there's your details now let's just flip it on its side and have a look at the mounting bracket okay this is the mounting bracket you see there's an angle there and there are tabs there and there are little, you probably won't be able to see but there are little keyways there so basically it does that there you go simples quite a robust steel bracket yeah and, and six holes and it just drops in and there's actually a hole just here just there where you can put a bolt in to lock it in place and one there okay so that is threaded there and there and no doubt the other side as well so quite a decent mounting bracket and actually probably quite easy to fabricate so that's it so what we'll do now is we'll uh, connect it up to the test equipment and see what happens so the test equipment has changed a bit I put the transformer in a box along with the rectifier and the smoothing capacitor and the the input to that is actually through a gland 
I was going to see, went to see my mate uh, Lee a while ago, a few weeks ago, and uh, I was taking the test equipment with me. I thought, do you know what? I'm going to put this in a box and screw it in place and everything, mount it properly. It's been loose and flopping about for three or four years. It's about time to do it properly. So there we go. So now we've got, ah, yes. Can we see? We can see just about. There we go. These are, what are they? They're sun clicks, which are not, M well, they're sort of MC4, but they're not MC4. So sun clicks goes with, um, SMAs and this here Lee gave me this it's the correct tool for undoing MC4 connections at some point I'll do the measurements with this but basically that's tapered there and there just there tapered and there and this looks about four mil wide, yeah. But of course, the distance between those is very, very um, important. And then this one's for doing it on its side. Amazing, eh? So you know you can do that. There we go. And it just squeezes those barbed. Where are we? Barb tabs. Yep. So let's just sort ourselves out. Move that over there. That goes in there. Hello. Ah, there we go, wrong one. Has that one been bashed? It looks like it has. Right, these ones are different. We're going to zoom in on this. These ones are different because they've got a piece there and there which shields that barb. So you have to then put a screwdriver down there and there and it can come undone. So that's what they're for. So this connector here down the bottom, can we see? This one here has been bashed somehow and it's not the right shape interesting so we'll have to go on number two and that will need modifying squeezing a bit so what have we got now so let's zoom out of that and reset the camera again so let's just about there I think all right we're getting some joy Let's just have a look at the screen. There we go. It's quite a narrow little window there. Something's happening. Seven, six, five, three, to waiting connect there we go it's happening let's just see if I can get a better view of that so I'm just going to turn this uh, DC input down a bit 
Okay, so now this is weird, right? When I first got this, see there it goes tapping, okay? When I first got this, it was in German. And you have to... You have to do all sorts of tapping for it to do other things. Anyway, I think it's like a single tap. There we go. Set language or whatever. You, once you get to to the one you want, then you double tap and it will go into it. And it's a right pain in the neck. I don't propose to go into language again because it was, it was, um, you really had to think your way through it. Okay. See, set language, then you double tap, and then you have a choice, and then you have to find a way of scrolling down, and then double tapping again. So there you go. But it's working. And of course, once you've got your, um, if you get one, that it's already set for UK you really don't need to um, mess with this at all because it doesn't seem like there's a time thing there or anything like that yeah and of course the power one seems to stay there which is great yeah so I think the thing to do now is just have the top off and have a look and see what's inside So it's Allen keys all the way around and yeah we have an earth there and this is solid aluminium and it's going to be at least 8 mil thick which is pretty impressive. Right you'll need to have a look in here won't you. It's all um, disconnected, unplugged and whatnot. Okay, capacitors, induction coils by the looks of it, more capacitors, yeah, everything glued down, uh, I don't know whether we can see or not, where are we, down here, yeah, there's two relays down there, but they're quite piddly, they are quite small indeed so let's just move round so we can see those relays and down a bit there they are so and this is the DC inside so the other side over there is the AC side I wonder if there's a fuse over there. I can't see one. No, there's a um, yeah a main sensing board there, but there doesn't seem to be any relays. Let's just move the camera around. There's the main sensing board. See where the mains power goes through that coil in the board. There we go. Well, plenty of space. Yep. All the the ribbons are glued in place. Uh, looks like that there is the temperature sensor, probably. Yeah, it's not a lot to to see really. Uh, down here, let me move the camera back. Where are we? Down here, we've got some communications there, and communications under these two. And these, there's just two 
connections are in it under each of these which would be ideal for things like whoop, CT clamps and stuff like that so there we go but the main thing is there are no buttons on the front so it's purely tapping but it looks like the um, the menus don't have a great deal to change which is useful unlike some of the other ones like the Aurora's where you can do all sorts of things this is just a standard 3.6 kilowatt inverter really heavy heavy front cover see how thick that is solid aluminium and then a big heat sink on the bottom extending all the way but if you ran it at half revs or just over in a cool place it's not going to give you any grief for a long long time okay hopefully that's been interesting you know if there's loads of at the moment in the UK there seem to be quite a lot of used grid inverters around where people are moving over or have been sold a battery system well yeah fine but I'm not too enamored of um, hybrid battery systems I think you're better off with um, a keep your standard grid connect and then add a Victron um, ESS system yeah so it's a it's a Victron MultiPlus with an ESS connected to it which actually enables power sharing and charging of batteries and all sorts of things um, controlled by a CT clamp so it's like it run it's like a power wall and it runs in parallel with your grid inverter so you don't end up having to change all this lot but of course you know industrial capitalism means that oh yeah change it all because we need to earn loads of money out of it but there you go I'm not going to say any more yes interestingly um, you can just about see the top of this I picked this up a few days ago it's uh, a lithium iron 30 BMW car battery that'll be interesting I'll just zoom just very briefly and we've got screws on the top security screws obviously yeah because we're not allowed to get into it but that's not going to stop us but let me just have a look at the viewfinder there you go yeah it says 12 volt 69 amp power yeah uh, it says 860 CCA there you go anyway we're going to dig into that next time let's just zoom out so I'll catch up with you soon hopefully you enjoyed it comments etc Cheers for now.